In this video, we are going to go ahead and open up our VR series again. And we are going to create a basic play area for our setup. So what we've been using now is just this basic one room. And what we want is to create something that's a little bit more interactive and a little bit better looking. So let's start from scratch. Let's go ahead and delete our floor. I actually don't need the fog. We don't need a light source. And we don't need the sky sphere. We're just going to have nothing but our player start. Using the least amount of resources possible will help your VR performance because each VR device has a certain frame rate that they want in order to prevent motion sickness. For the Vive, we're going to try to hit 90 frames per second. So using the least amount of things such as post-processing, movable lighting sources, you want everything to be static, for example, is going to give us better performance. So we're not going to use any actual lights, we're just going to use some emissive materials. Let's go ahead and drop another cube into our ground. And we're going to resize this. Let's go with something like a 15 by 15 square. So we want 15 by 15 by 15. And of course we can't see anything because we have no lights. Let's change this to unlit. And let's figure out where our cube went to. There we go. Now we're going to make this a floor, so we don't really need a Z of 15. We'll do a Z of 0.25. Now one thing you'll notice here is because we have it locked, everything is going to scale together. Let's unlock that so we can rescale it, and we'll give ourselves a nice little floor. We want walls, so let's grab another cube, and we'll move this one up. We're going to make this one unlocked, good, and we're going to need, what, a Z of 15. A Y of 15? Eh, yeah, sure, why not? We'll go for that wall. <laughs> and a scale of 0.25 on the X, which of course did not cooperate. There we go. And this is going to give us a little side wall here. Let's move it up. We'll hit the end key to drop it down, which should make it flush. Like that. We will move this over here. We'll go ahead and move this over here. And we're, we're, we don't need exact intersections. We're, you know, we're good enough with something similar and close. But, you know, why not? We'll move it in 980. There we go. We'll go ahead and hold down the Alt key on the x-axis to duplicate and drag another wall over this way. Like that. And let's go ahead and duplicate out again on the x. We'll rotate this 90 degrees. We'll move this up. Let's go into our top-down view so I can be lazy. And we'll find this. We'll move it over and over. We're just not really too concerned because we're, we're going to be using world. I'm going to use the Alt key and drag to make a duplicate. We're going to be using some world-aligned materials, so we're not worried about everything being too perfect here. I mean, obviously, you can make it perfect, but we're not too worried about that. We'll go ahead and move this one over just because we can. We'll move this one over just because we can. Okay. Go back to our perspective. Now we have a nice little room. We will go ahead and take our ground. Hold down the Alt key as we drag up on the blue. We'll duplicate a ceiling. And we'll consider that close enough. There we go. Now we have a little room. Now let's make sure we build our lighting. We are using static lighting. That's what you should use when you're aiming for VR or mobile. So we'll go ahead and build this. It's not really going to matter too much for what we're doing, but you want to build it anyways. Because if you don't, you'll get lighting needs rebuilt errors. So for our material, let's go ahead and create a new material. Now I can make a master material to do this, but I'm just going to be lazy. I'm going to create three different materials. One for the floor and the ceiling, one for the X walls, and one for the Y walls. So that way, I don't have to worry about a master material with a bunch of lerping. I can just copy paste. Let's make our first one. And let's not do blueprint. Let's do material. And we'll call this the floor mat. And actually, it's going to work better having duplicates because uh, one of our bonus features, if you stay all the way through to the end in the conclusion, I'll show you how to make the floor and the ceiling pulse as well. So let's go to the floor material and open that. And since we're going to build in, we're going to use editor content. So we're going to need a texture. We'll hold down the T key and click to add a texture sample. We'll go down to here. We have nothing. 
view options, show engine content, and let's go ahead and type in grid. And that was not the right grid on it, so let's type not hit enter this time. And what we're going to look for is the one by one grid right here. And this is going to give us our basic grid. We can save and apply, and it'll apply the grid. What we want to do is apply this grid as an emissive color, but we want to make it where it's going to be tiling evenly no matter what. And to do that, we're going to use the world position. If we were to take this floor, for example, and drop it on the ground, let it compile out. Actually, let's just throw it on everything because why not? While it compiles, we'll go ahead and save out, apply, save. It'll compile our shaders. And actually, this is a good time to do something else. Let me finish up this material and then do something else. And you notice here's our grid. But actually, that wouldn't work too bad. You know what? Since I spaced everything evenly, we don't need to use world positioning. Well, let's, let's just try. Let's try. Yeah, you know what? No, we'll use world positioning because it's fun. So we'll go with world position and spell it properly. And we'll find coordinates world position. There's a bunch of options. We don't care about them. We just want the basic world position. What we're going to do is do a mask. And this is why I said we need multiple materials. And we're going to mask out the red and the green, or the X and the Y. We're going to divide this to make it smaller, because if we don't, we get a huge number. And we're going to call this something like 200. And we're going to stick that into our UV. And we'll go ahead and plug that into here. And then there we go. Now, if you notice, as I move this around, you'll notice this is staying because it's using the actual position on our screen and in the world to texture our material rather than an individual thing. And if you take this and we move it, even though I'm moving the ground, our material is staying the same. So it makes it great if I wanted to add in something else, like let's say, boom, we'll add in a cube. Here is a little blocker. And then we slap the material on it. Let's slap the material on it. You'll notice it now looks like it's actually part of our scenery and we didn't have to retexture it. And it it's, gives us a pretty cool little effect for what we're aiming for. I might leave those in. I might put some of those in the corner for decoration. Okay, so the problem is, though, as you notice, our walls are these vertical lines. And actually, let's make our ceiling. We've got that. There we go. And that's because our material is only working with the X and the Y. We actually need to work with the other ones. We need to work with the X and the Z and the Y and the Z. So we need to make basically materials just for the walls. And the nice thing is those are super simple. We're just going to go ahead and we'll duplicate it. And we'll go ahead and duplicate that again. And we'll call it wall material too because why not? Go ahead and open our wall. We're going to edit this really. One of our wall materials is basically going to work on the X and the Z. So we only want to max out the red and blue, or X, Y, Z. And we'll save that one. And then our other material is going to be opposite. It's going to work on our Y and our Z. We'll go here. We now work on a Y and our Z. We'll go and apply that. We'll save. And we'll hope our finish compiling here. Once they are done compiling, what we'll end up with is a material that will work on our X and our Z axis, a material that works on our Y and our Z axis, and then a material that works on just our X and our Y, which is our floor and our ceiling. Come on, finish compiling. You know you can do it. This actually leads into the other thing I was going to talk about, about instant stair recording. Recording? Oh, I don't think, think that was named right. This is under editor. Um, rendering. No, it's going to be under project settings. Edit, project settings, rendering, instant stereo. Yeah, okay, it's just called instant stereo. We're going to go ahead and turn this on once we're done with these rendering out. And what it does is it's going to help us with performance. It's going to give us back a few percents in performance, which when you're dealing with VR, every bit counts. 
And the only issue with that is it's going to require all your materials to be recompiled and remade. So honestly, this is something that we should have done in the beginning. I just pushed it off to now so I can actually show you what's going to happen. So as soon as this last shader finishes compiling and I can set up my scene, there we go. We can go ahead and throw a wall material up. That's the right one there. We'll throw that one in there. If you threw the wrong one on, you'll notice well, it doesn't work. Throw the right one on, boom, we have our room. Let's go ahead and shut off, unlit, turn it back to lit, and you'll now notice we have a nice lit Tron or holodeck looking experience. And if we were to go ahead and hit play, we're gonna find that, of course, we are in the wrong spot. Why are we in the wrong spot? Hopefully you can figure that out. We will find our player and he is somewhere he shouldn't be. If we look at our ground floor, we set this at 120 centimeters above. So we need to hit our player, put him 120 centimeters. Let's also move him more towards the center. Let's see, this is actually here, what's nice? Here's our transform, which if you notice is pretty much in the center of what we created. Let's copy that, go to our player, paste it in, boom, our player should now be centered. Honestly, I think he's below, because the center of this item right here, this um, brush we created, the center is technically going to be in the center of it. And I want to say it's a little bit smaller. So let's do our player start and move him up a little bit. Let's say to right there. If we look here, yeah, now it looks a little better. Let's try dropping him on the floor. Put our headset on the floor. And that looks like we're on the floor. So we'll put him back up here. We actually, I'll go ahead and look around. And we're in this nice large room that's extremely tall. I think I might lower the ceiling. That looks like it would hurt. So we're in this nice little holodeck looking room. Let me lower the ceiling because that's kind of eerie. And the nice thing is just grab the ceiling, grab my Z, drag it down, and you'll notice it's going to stay sized properly. And let's see, one, two, that's, that's. Let's move it like something like that. Let's check out our VR preview. That looks better. I can pretty much see if I'm standing. I'm standing right about here. I can pretty much see the entire front all at once. Okay, that's good. So we're going to go with that. So this is going to be our play area that we're going to use. As you can see, we set it up. We have a nice little area we can play in that's going to work for what we want. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and create some targets. We'll create some spawners for our enemies. We'll create our enemies themselves. We'll slap some simple red little material on them. And then we'll go ahead and get ready to set up hitting them and making them go away and actually having targets we can shoot.